in, welcome in. <laughs> welcome in. Welcome back to Do It For The Story. I'm Morgan. And I'm Stacy. Cheers. Cheers. Davis. Diffs. We are back um, recording on a Sunday for you all for this Thursday. So a little bit more normal than our last couple of sessions, but yeah, later nonetheless. So we're going to try to bring yes. the energy. Yes. Um, Thank God for espresso. Yeah. And we, I feel like we've been, it's crazy to me that it's already this time on a Sunday because I mean, it sounds like a broken record. Weekends go quickly, but again, we packed a lot in. Oh my God. I, I mean... I feel like I've been on a whirlwind a bit over the last couple of weeks, just with stuff going on. But yeah, even this weekend though, um, we were back on the boat. We were doing, we were Airbnb. And so we did, you know, a couple overnights on the boat and um, also we're lucky enough to crash at Elisa's because yada, yada needed to move the boat today. And thank God for her um, community, which kind of mm. dropping a little something in for the future for the rest of the conversation. Um but yeah, and then just got to enjoy. It was gorgeous this weekend. Gorgeous weekend. Yes, went to a party for some of our top listeners, Andy and Annie. <laughs> Happy anniversary. You, Happy anniversary, Andy and Annie. Yeah, Amazing party. Awesome. Um, and yeah, just got to like be home and in Annapolis and, you know, DMV and yeah, just Love relax. It. Love it. That yeah, was my and weekend. it is, it's that time of the year. We talked about the seasons before, but where we on the East Coast, especially here in Maryland, so if you don't know, weather-wise, we're in, we talked about before, faux fall, we're holding on still. Yes. To every warm weather weekend. So we had 70s weather. We were like, uh, hell yeah. People were, were out and about. Out and about. It was, Annapolis was packed like downtown was wild, wild. And I kept bumping into like, even we did, um, me, Joe and, and Angel did a walk, a later walk on Friday night and, um, just bumped into, uh, to downtown yeah, and bumped into so many people. And well, it was just like yeah, that everybody, full moon, that harvest well, moon and the warm was weather. Going to say it was that just new perfect. moon. I mean yeah. the big, yeah, the super moon, it also was giving us literal light yes. in the evening that now that we're in this shit gets darker so yeah. early everyone was like the moon give me you yeah. know i felt like there was everyone a lot was of moon walks yeah. yeah absolutely yeah we're out um, yeah i had yeah, one of nice. my girlfriends um she came down yesterday one of my oldest dc friends and love you mandy and she we did um just a meander day walk around annapolis you know caught up which is the best because we we walked I don't know. We walked a lot yesterday, at least six miles. Oh, nice. Yeah. And just caught up and just enjoyed what was going on. And, you know, I, um, yeah. Yeah. I, I got a gift from Jeff, you know, wait, wait, what'd you, my mean? little ring watch I have on. I just looked at it. made me think of it. Who's Jeff? Bezos. <laughs> I, I got dead. this little ring watch. I know I got it off Amazon because I love, I like having a watch on, but I don't always like having it. I, I like a dressier look oh, or I, something. Yeah. Like I some, like a watch, you know, like during the wrist. day, you know, how many, no disrespect to anybody, but I don't need an Apple watch because it's too much for me yeah. going on. Yeah. I need, it's a little bit more disconnected when I just have the time. I love that. Right here on my finger. It's so cute. So thank you, Mr. Bezos. It's funny. I just remember <laughs> that. Like all the 90s things are back. I absolutely, that was like so cool to rock the ring yeah. watch. Yeah. Truthfully, I don't even know the 90s. back. I saw a, a gate attendant, shout out Southwest Airlines at, I was like, I love, she had all these rings on mm -hmm. when I flew the other week. And um, I asked her, I was like, oh, and I love that you have a ring watch. Like. You know, I used to have one as a kid, and she said, and I said, is it vintage? And she goes, you know what? Same page as you. I used to have one. It broke. Couldn't get it to work. And she's like, so here. I got this from Jeff. <laughs> so she gave it to Jeff from her. Bezos. I love, yeah. I love, I love, I love. That's yeah. hilarious. Yeah. I'm going to have to use that. Yeah. So I told her, I said, I'm getting the ring watch, and I'm stealing that line. So. <laughs> I'm dead. Um, but yeah, but, I, you know, like we were saying, this weekend, it was just beautiful. We were out. I also was... Having a friend, you know, um, in town, everyone I think that doesn't know about Annapolis is always intrigued when they're there, like, oh, it's so cute and whatever. 
but it gives off that it's a city technically, but it's small town and it gives that small town vibe. So of course, like you said, we're running into people. I'm like saying hi to folks yesterday. And it was also just that like level of people are happy Mm -hmm. and people are like saying like, Oh, Hey, what's going on? And so even Morgan and I talking about, okay, what are we going to discuss today? What are we going to talk about? we had been reflecting about just community in general yeah. and like community isn't just, well, literally community is about the people. It's not, the place can be the common denominator characteristic thing that you have in common, but community is people, whether you, you know, have in common a religion, a a hobby, a topic or topic, a, a place where you live, it comes down to the who. Yeah. You know, and so we were talking about that and starting my weekend, actually, Friday morning, I worked Friday, but, you know, everybody's already, we're looking towards the goal. Yes. We're looking towards whatever you can to get yourself through Friday. Exactly. (laughs) And so I love to start Friday with like me time, usually like some yoga, something like that to kind of, you know, ground me for the day. And I started at beautiful Groundswell Yoga. Mm. So shout out to Tuffy. It was my first class there. Nice. But in the class, it was beautiful, amazing, atten- atten- I can't speak, intentions. But after class, Duffy, who led the class and owns Groundswell, was introducing, just not even introducing, but just in a natural way. It, she we always naturally does yeah, it. Yeah, we were chatting. Yeah. And had just introduced me to a couple of the women there via like, oh, you know this person, you should, she does this podcast, this person does this. And I met two women who then when I went across the street to grab coffee, ran into them again. And they were like, hey, do you want to sit with us and have coffee? And I said, I would love to, but I had to rush to get back to my desk for work. Right. But it was that little moment. I like Mm -hmm. it set the tone for my day Mm -hmm. because call it the we grew up in a small town, but everybody likes to not be recognized but you like to have that human like, hey, how are you? Yeah, the human interaction. The human interaction. Someone sees me and yeah, I mean, as, simply, as simple as that. Like people like to be seen and valued and heard. And right. even if it's simply the offering of, do you want to sit down? Right. Yeah, that can totally, that totally sets a beautiful tone for your day. Right. And so while I didn't join them, you know, for the coffee, I, it was also... The one woman happens to do sound baths and at some other locally at some yoga studios and has her own business. And also I didn't know at the time I had just looked into her event because Duffy mentioned like, yeah, hey, there's sound bath coming up. And I had gone onto her Instagram when I got home because I'd been meaning to get to one of those and saw that she also did Reiki. Mm. So I actually had a Reiki session today, Mm. which I'll talk about more in another pod, but I felt it's something I'd always wanted to do, Mm. but I felt like when I saw that she did this and it's already vetted right in my mind by someone I knew in the community Mm -hmm. that especially since, you know, Duffy better than I do, Mm -hmm. I was like, okay, you know, energy attracts energy, good vibes. I also have seen some of these people or she also does sound baths at um, another community yoga based class. So it was that level of trust mm-hmm. as well. Mm-hmm. The commun- power and community of me saying like, yeah, let's. Yeah, let me, I let me book ahead. a Reiki exactly. session. Because to like, let's fill in the blanks. Something like Reiki is something like acupuncture or a massage where it's intimate. Right. And it's also, you know, especially for me, like I've never had a Reiki session. So especially for that. I wouldn't want something that I had no experience with and wasn't even really sure of what it entails to be with someone completely random or at least that didn't have amazing Google Google reviews or something. Right. You know what I mean? Right. And it just made me, yeah, that more of like, Go you know, ease I should, into it. I've been wanting to do this. And then it was like, okay, the stars are aligning. Mm. This is someone, you know, that, again, it's that vetting. Like Those I are my some, favorite it, moments. It was a referral without directly getting a referral. You yes. know what I mean? Yes. And I love those moments too. You just saying that like you've been wanting to do it and it's like approach. The like universe has been sending it to you multiple times. Exactly. You've heard it. And 
I don't know how to explain it, but like you're shaking your head right now. If you know what I mean, if you've experienced that, or like something like Mm -hmm. Reiki, you know, comes to you multiple times within a period of time. And Mm -hmm. you're like, okay, yeah, I, okay. I'm just going to do that. I'm listening. I'm I'm tuning in, tuning into yourself. I'm listening to that. I'm leaning in. Exactly. Self-aware. Yeah. But so I was telling Morgan about this prior to us recording and Again, mentioning the community, the theme of community kept coming up, Mm -hmm. right? And then even with, like I said, my friend that was in town and talking about just observing even folks on the street and that everyone was like, hi, and just happy to be out and about. And I think, um, you know, we said, well, why don't we talk about this? Because it's been coming up. And so again, in the theme of listening to it and hearing that topic, um, because recently too, where we were talking about community in a different sense was um you mentioned that you've been out of town so much but oh when you came back into town recently yeah and you know y'all know now that we airbnb is our little side hustle shout out airbnb we will take that sponsorship um (laughs) (laughs) but you know and we do love it i mean it's been an amazing tool for us but um but yeah so we've just been we end up being out of town or align you know our trips and um you know, even if we're not out of town, even if I'm just like staying on the boat, you know, that takes effort and energy for me to do sure. all those things. And even coming back to my house before it's like cleaned and all those things, like there's energy involved in all that. And the support of community has made that easier. And like, I'll give the specific example of, you know, what I was referencing earlier with you, Stace, was. Um, you know, one of the recent times that we came back into town, literally pulled onto our street and and not even our street, my my corner block. Mm-hmm. Um, and so we're talking like my my community couldn't even be like as as close to my house as you can get. Right. And I turn onto the street and it's just me and Angel in the car And I'm about to, the day I'm about to jump into, and I'm trying to stay centered and focused, but like I've just driven back into town, early drive back into town. Um, We've, I've got to, Angel doesn't have school that day. Mm. There was, they had a teacher's um, conference, you know? So Angel unexpectedly, not unexpectedly, but on a random day that I'm working, he's out of school. And um, so I, I'm driving in and it just so happens that as I'm driving by uh, or as I'm driving up the street, there is Warren Ben out in front of their house and there's Jorge, who is our other neighbor and my, you know, practically family, family is what we call each other, that lives around the corner and helps us extensively um, and is a huge part of our community, but was watching our dog Stormy Mm -hmm. and is standing there because he's also friends with Warren and Ben and just so happened to be Mm -hmm. walking Stormy down the street. And so ends up being in the front yard with them. And so I pull over immediately just to like chat and hang with them. Also, Warren was like, yeah, as they're, you know, as you're getting your day started, why don't you just chill here? I'm, he happened to not be working that day. And I was like, are you sure? Like, and he was like, yeah, let the dog run around in the yard, you know, it just ended up becoming this day where where I was thinking, I'm about to pull in. I'm going to have to figure out. It's just going to be one of those days where. Chaos. Chaos. Angels, I'm going to end up having to stick him in front of the TV. You know, I'm thinking like a COVID day, you know. Yeah. And all of a sudden, Warren's taking care of my kid. Ben's rotating in, in and out when he's taking his work lunch break. Ben's making angel lunch. And all of a sudden, my day went from what could have been pure chaos and yeah. stress to just this, it was a beautiful moment. Like literally I took a picture of Stormy, Angel, Ben and Warren <laughs> on a blanket, having a picnic under a tree because my son yeah. said, can we have a picnic? And of course his uncles are going to entertain that. And I'm like, this is, this is exactly what, when we say, when you hear this conversation happening right now, where the Surgeon General is saying that parents are now, at this point in time, more stressed than ever, mm. you know, the so to pause, if you haven't heard the Surgeon General put out a report um, about 
parental stress Mm -hmm. and just feeling um, how parents have so much weighing on them and they're more stressed now than they've ever been. And there's a list of all these reasons and I'll get into that later, but it just makes you think of a lot of that stress. And this is part of what he says, the Surgeon General says is lack of community. Right. Everyone needs to take, take on the, not just a parent, like it's so valuable for a healthy community to have healthy children and totally. those healthy children will turn into healthy adults. And even if you don't have kids, that kid's going to be the doctor that takes care of you or that kid's going to be the person that is the kind person that says, can I mow your lawn today? Mm-hmm. It doesn't. And that's what we're talking about with community. It is, it is, it is a lifeline. It really is. And I couldn't imagine even having, I couldn't imagine having Angel without having community. I could not imagine being a parent without community. Which is interesting because you also were telling me about like you were at a party or something recently and this has also came up because yeah, it was, it was interesting. The Surgeon General article, like you're saying about the parents being stressed and what are they saying? It's just parental stress. Yeah. So basically, you know, the Surgeon General puts out yeah like the warning the warnings and it literally is that or like they're Just like aware with smoking of, like a surgeon general exactly. warning of like this is dangerous could cause birth defects and cancer exactly and so it's what the surgeon general put out is you know parental stress and well-being it's at you know an all-time high and it's is is a real that it's a health crisis for all of us recognizing and that's where you know, to the point that I just made that it will impact all of us if you have a bunch of stressed out parents, a stressful and, and, you know, I mean, maybe I'm stating the obvious, but a stressed parent creates a stressed child mm. and a stressed child can deal then with anxiety and like yada, 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 right. I need to go all the things, all the things. Right. And it, those are things in society that end up impacting us all. And so the, they talk, you know, so a part of also what the Surgeon General is saying, so not only is it, you know, a lack of community that people have and that loneliness, people are lonely, you know, 50% of people are lonely. And so, mm-hmm. which is another, like, I'll let you get into a little bit more about that, but um, because the Surgeon General also put out that there's a loneliness epidemic. And so it also says literally half of these parents we know are lonely. They're lonely. And right. so that then, can you imagine the stress of being a parent? And then also feeling lonely. I mean, talk about no. like, I can't imagine because just you saying that. Can you imagine being a parent and then feeling lonely? And as someone who doesn't have kids, just the feeling lonely by itself, like you're saying so much. But then it's like because I think of lonely and especially in the child having children, I think nobody, you're caring for someone. You're putting everything into others. Mm -hmm. Nobody's taking care of you, looking out for you. Right. You know, and interestingly, you know, you saying that, you mentioned to me, you went to a party recently and there were other people, a lot of couples there that also had kids. And then there were couples there, there was a couple there that didn't. Right. And this couple, you said, I mean, you can tell it, but. Yeah, no. And the couple literally said to me, um, you know, because they they had been literally had been together the exact same amount of time as Joe and I. And they we were at a party with there's tons of kids around and you were just talking about each other and, you know, whatever, mm-hmm. answering questions about each other. And I said, um, so do you all have kids after they had asked if we if I did? And they said, no, but do you think we should? We had already been having a nice conversation. You're sure, just vibing with sure. someone. And they said, no, but like, do you think that we should? And he was being completely genuine, you right. know? And my exact response was, I said, you know, the first thought that comes to mind is because they'd already told me that they were from Chicago. So they were in town for, this was a party in Maryland. So they, I knew that they were in town. You know, it wasn't like all the other people that I knew lived down the street from this party. Mm-hmm. And I said, you know, I don't know your reason for being in Chicago if you're from there originally right. or what. But my first thing that comes to mind is if you're going to have kids, you need to either be around family or chosen family. You need community. You need support because it would be, so difficult and exhausting to to be a parent without that Mm -hmm. and they you know really appreciated it but also it was just that simple fact that you know before we even started talking about this today that that was my initial reaction 
was seriously like, it's a lot. It's, and, but then I also followed it up with, it's the most beautiful thing. And I'm more in love with angel than any human. Like you can't even describe that, but that doesn't mean that it, because of that love that it's easy all the time. And if I didn't have community, right. I, it, it's just the exhaustion. Right. So, right. Yeah. But, and so even that, when you told me this story about this couple asking, I'm like, well, that's perfect. Because again, like you're saying, you need, you know, it takes a village. We always say that when it comes to kids or parenting, I should say, but it, we've mentioned this in another podcast, it takes a village always, you know, we are meant to be tribal herd people and we're more into the point of the, or not the point, but to relate it to the loneliness, you know, we do so much independently. We can go it alone. We can, should we? That's a different, you know, that's right. That's really the, the meat of it. And I think with the, the aspect of, well, with the loneliness or sorry, with the parent, the surgeon general parents being stressed when that, because people probably have seen it, you know, on Instagram or the article, it, it's been a headline. And when it was served to me, and then like, I, I actually remember I DM'd it to you mm-hmm. just as a like, this is interesting. And of course, if we see things that are interesting, it's like, huh, what are your takes? Hopefully form up some juices for the pod. And Morgan immediately replied and just said, wow, I mean, that's not me. It's not yeah. my experience. Yeah. But I bet that would be your experience if you didn't have community. If I had been asked to relocate for work, for example, and I had said yes to that opportunity, um, yeah, I can't imagine. I mean, look at why so many people during COVID, as soon as they had to go remote, they were like, okay, well, I'm going to move back near family or I'm going to, you know, move to a place where I know I have community. Some were like, I'm going to the woods because I can now. And I'm like, huh, you weren't from the woods. Yeah. Very interesting. It's and, like, well, but, but a lot of those people I've heard, I'm not saying, okay, I'm not saying like all, all of those people, but I just know of personal anecdotal stories where someone moved away during COVID because they were in a city or, mm. you know, just wanted the fresh air and to get outside because they can't do the typical interactions. And then they moved back because they don't have any community in this right. random, on this random farm, right. you know? Right. And that's the thing you're like, because for me, someone that doesn't have children during COVID, I mean, we weren't far in proximity from our family and friends, but we were just the house where Joe and I used to live in. It was just far enough from everybody. We were like 30 minutes from everyone, but there was, it wasn't, it didn't have that. I wasn't getting that sense of community Mm -mm. and it was harder to connect with folks that I just felt like it was, it was creating an isolated atmosphere for me because I was working Mm, from home. Yeah. It's not like I'm going to meet people and where I was living then because of work, because work was not where I was located and I had to make more of an effort. But when you're not in areas that have, that are more, I don't know. I was living in a college town. I was living in college park, Maryland. So if you know it, it's where the university of Maryland is. It was not the place that had so much more ease of like, hey, there's this meetup group, you know, where there's this yoga studio. I, like I couldn't, I was lacking even that, like a yoga studio I could go to, which is always my go-to to find community, even if I'm traveling. So interesting, same for me. And I yeah. want to just pop in and kind of get more of the local sense of thing. I'm like, let me try to find the local yoga studio. And um, so it was a little bit harder, but, you know, Joe and I had tossed the ideas back and forth. And I'm like, I learned in COVID. If I have, if something, God forbid, we don't want that to happen again, obviously, but if something happened where I have to then only be able to be around, you know, a certain amount of people, or I can only be around people that are in my area. I'm like, I listened, I learned. I'm now, again, this is me saying it as a person that works remote and I get it, that privilege and I didn't have kids. I'm not, saying we're moving, I'm taking out of your school district. You know, I do understand that in terms of stage of life, I was in a pretty cushy situation to make a pivot. But I'll tell you when, you know, we've mentioned it before, our good friend Warren and Ben moved here and like, you know, are Morgan's neighbors now. 
I was like really feeling the I need that. I'm going to be, of course, obviously FOMO I would have, but it was more of like, I'm not getting it. I've tried here to make mm-hmm. friends. Mm-hmm. It's not happening mm-hmm. and it is impacting my happiness. Yeah. And it's interesting too, because sometimes, you know, I think there's certain places that I think the community thing because of how the actual literal location is set up, I think it can be easier to make community. Like, Mm -hmm. you know, I'm thinking of college park and like, there's not that same kind of like downtown or like community centered. That this is where the hubs are. Like you go into, you walk into Annapolis and whether it's, you know, Eastport or downtown, there's like certain areas that there's a hub, even if you're talking about like the Naval Academy, like that's a hub, that's a place that community comes together. And even gathering place, like you're saying a park. Yes, exactly. And so if there's not that natural, like the way that the, the location is set up, if it's not natural, because I've thought about there's other suburbs that I've talked about with friends that were like, Oh, we thought about moving there. We went and visited. And then there was like no downtown and we kind of didn't even know mm-hmm. like, where would we, where do you, where meet? do you How meet? Could you Where's organically the central? meet people? Right. Which then also right. makes me think about um, like the times when I didn't have like to think about how I know like every single neighbor around me now. And when I lived in DC in the same apartment for eight years, like, I honestly, I'm trying to think if I knew anyone on the floor that I lived on. Wow. And that's wild. But the thing is, it's so it's not that there's literal, you need a certain amount of bodies, right? Because we were on top of each other in this apartment building. But DC is this like transient place. Mm. And, you know, it almost reminds me of like when we lived in Hawaii on Oahu, a friend of ours that was born and raised local Hawaiian they had said that part of their, you know, the sadness for them because they're an outgoing person of meeting a lot of people that they're, it's so transient that people are going to leave. And And so because of her personality, she was just so like warm and would bring people in anyway. But we, we had talked to other people that said it's so transient. We get kind of exhausted Mm. to like meet these people that just want a friend for their moment in Hawaii for two years. Interesting. And it's just like exhausting. Like we'd rather just stay with our pack that we know, like they own property. They're staying here forever. They're raising their kids here. They are invested invested in the community. community. They literally have like, especially folks that I'm not saying you have to have own a property, but they are there, whether you move somewhere and you're renting for the job, you're, you know, you're like, I'm here for now. It wasn't just like you're saying COVID where I work remote, I can go wherever. This is where I am at the moment. And even prior to COVID, it's interesting you say this about even using the DC example, because clearly in terms of a more of a larger city, that's the biggest size city that I've lived in population wise, right? But when I lived in D.C. and then I moved to Baltimore and I was in D.C. at this point, let's call it at least eight years. Right. And moving to Baltimore, I'm talking first week. I was like, whoa, this is so refreshing Mm. that people were when I was like, "Okay, people are kind. People are saying hello to me when I'm walking down the street. When I'm on a walk and I make eye contact with someone and say hi in the morning and it's just us, it's just me and that one person (laughs) for as far as I can see, they're not looking and putting their head down Mm -hmm. right away. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, sure, call that the small town person in me that I'm used, you know, we grew up in a small town with, you know, it was a small community, but we also had, you know, our parents knew everybody. Yeah, but also not to cut you off, but because I know where you're going, because think about Annapolis, though, like, you know, we say it has the small town vibes, but that's because we literally mean small right. town vibes, it's actually not a small town. Right. And everybody's still looking you in the eye and saying hi. Right. Everyone's saying good morning. There's you more. Know, hi, how are you? Right. And I'm not saying this is for all of D.C., but again, I didn't me personally. I was a renter living in a huge apartment building. Exactly. Like you said, I didn't know anybody on my floor. So I moved to Baltimore, but literally on a walk. I couldn't believe the first day I ran through Patterson Park. I'm like, so many people were responding to me going, hi, or just like, how's it going? You know, replying back, looking me in the eye. And I started to think, oh, I bet this is because 
Baltimore is, you know, it's a city in Maryland. It's a smaller size city, but it's less transient than D.C. That's D.C. It, yeah. has a lot of people coming from and even international transient. Mm, mm-hmm. So it was that. But then because of it having this local connection, you know, people that were even if they weren't from Baltimore, but like myself at the time, I'm from the state of Maryland. Right. I went to school in Baltimore. Right. Right. You have these connections. Everybody has, there's more commonalities where people can connect. And while I found, and in the other episode I mentioned about, it was, you were less likely to see someone sitting alone at a bar in Baltimore, just grabbing a drink on their own or dinner or reading a book, like I might in DC or New York, right? But you were more likely to be, I mean, yeah, I had some friends there already, But it was them welcoming me into their groups or then friends I made through them. I'm hanging out with friends of friends that, you know, the the main connection person was not involved in those interactions then without them. You know, it was like, come to my book club, come to the yoga class, come to this sport thing that I'm doing, come to this improv thing that I'm doing. It was a lot more of grouping and people saying, like, come along with me. It was just interesting. Yeah. Than living in a bigger city. Yeah, it's funny because the, our D.C. time, a lot of, and it was also, you know, a different time. Remote work was not, there was, of course, some people were working remote, but that was not the same as when we were working in D.C. And so we made a lot of friends through work. We were yeah. at, we were at work and in person at right. work. And like you did improv in DC and there right. was, you know, those things were happening, but a lot of those connections even were through it, work. It yeah, wasn't like, but I didn't even, it's really, int- that's a good one to bring up the improv I did in DC. It was fun. And I did it two sessions, like years apart with two different improv groups. Right. Mm-hmm. I didn't make any friends out of that any connections Mm. outside of it people seem to come in more and there were people that were there more for oh i'm doing improv for work i Mm -hmm. want to get better about my presentation skills Mm -hmm. or i'm doing this because i want to it it seemed more i don't know there wasn't a lot of connection made It, it was interesting in both of the groups that i had whereas baltimore the times i went to the activities people were much more Hey, what are you doing this weekend? And again, it was smaller in that you were more likely maybe to run in p- to people if you were living in that area. But it really wasn't that about the running in. It was just a different community giving that. It, again, it was giving small town vibes. Well, you know what, too? I bet you anything because like I'm just I haven't spent a ton of time in Baltimore, but like I'm a Marylander. I know Baltimore. I bet. Bet I would be willing to bet, and I'm interested to hear what, what your response is going to be to this. In Baltimore, I would guess that like some of the first questions that you're asked when you're meeting someone are are like, "What neighborhood do you live in?" or "What college did you go to?" Absolutely. Or, or "Where did you go to?" Where did you go to high school? Where did you, where did you go to high school? Where did you go to high school is probably a big one. Yeah, um, because there's a lot of that. Ass- and even the, elementary, elementary. Yeah. There's a lot of that assumed. Like there's a lot of Marylanders, right? Whereas DC, it's what do you do? Yes, and let's talk. Yes. Like the and the what do you do? is placing so much value on your job versus Mm. who you are as a human. We're Mm. saying like what, I mean, I literally just heard this the other day. I think, I don't remember what it was, but I think it was a podcast that was laughing about, um, you know, when you, Oh, I know exactly what it was. It was girls got to eat saying in New York, it's like making the choice of which neighborhood you live in because that becomes a part of like your personality. Yeah. Like you're known, you know, they were kind of making a joke. Like, I mean, they're serious, but right. it was like a little bit of, you know, if you choose Chelsea, if you choose Brooklyn, like, you know, that's like your part of your persona. And it's so interesting that, you know, in, in, DC, it's that same. You're not thinking that. That's you're not so thinking true. about like in New York. You are asking what neighborhood no, you live in. The artists in New York, where it's so much focused around that. No one asked me in Baltimore yeah. what I did, and and I think that's too because again, pre remote work, right? The jobs in Baltimore tend to be in the industries more of healthcare, education, 
And then like business wise, there was a lot of, you know, there's bigger companies like the T Row prices and the, you know, M and T bank of, but you didn't have where DC, at least for me, you know, I never worked in the government. Some people say, some people like to defend the DC. Why does everyone ask what you do as in, well, there's a lot of people working in the government and these are people that are working for, you know, they're, it's a more of a passion thing. They're doing it for the mission. Or and I'm like, I that's don't know. That's such a DC thing to I say. Think, I, think I think like you're saying out. the common denominator is it's so transient that typically it goes to work. And maybe that is because, yeah, it's typically, or there's a lot of, you know, people think government, you're a government employee trying to connect the dots, but totally agree. I would, I would laugh about that in Baltimore. Nobody, nobody asked. It was not a leading question. And it's also too, because of, and I, I, so I shouldn't say that's a cop out because I do get what, what folks are saying and don't, don't get it twisted. We love DC. I wouldn't have lived there that long if I didn't find, we had tons of community and if I didn't have a great time and all the things, but that it was a definite difference about, about DC. And I could, I'm sure that there's other cities that are the same way. We had a great time, but like we talked about in other episodes where, you know, at least me, I worked at companies that I worked at a lot of startups. Mm-hmm. So with that, you tend to hire personnel. Like you tend to be able to hire to like the outgoing, you know, they would say the airport test. Who would you want to be in an airport with for right. 10 hours if your flight got delayed? Right. Um, but it also, you're working together, usually in close quarters, you know, as a startup might grow, literally sharing a desk and whatnot that you do form. And they tend to be, at least when I lived in D- in DC age wise, the age average age demographic at the companies I work for tend to skewed younger. So it was easier for me just to be like, Oh, these are people also in their twenties that are single, not married yet. We have a crew naturally that was put there for me. But now if we're in this remote work world and I'm just a 20 something saying, I'm going to go to DC. That's a cool city. I want to experience that. Some of my friends or not even, I got this job, even if they got a job there, you're less likely to have even other companies, right? Even those big groups, because we talked about it before, we would overlap, right? I would show up to the company happy hours that you, where you were working. You would come to my work events. You know, we talk about even how our friends, we would sometimes work at the same companies, you know, we'd flip flop over the years. But so that piece too, we, we talked about with the Surgeon General saying there is this you know, 50% of parents now are stressed. There's also the other side of it where there's the loneliness epidemic that the Surgeon General is also talking about. And so you, I mentioned that in the, along with how work was for us, because I didn't have to make as much of an effort to find those places. They were kind of, I just got lucky. Like I said, my friend Mandy, who was here this weekend, I met her at work. <laughs> We've been friends since 2010. Right. We then moved into the city, you know, she moved into the building I was living in. And, but that relationship started there and it kept going. But now with this loneliness epidemic, you're like, well, what's changed or why? And this, this, I have to read this quote because this is literally, you know, and now a message from the Surgeon General. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but he, this is what says, uh, he warned, the Surgeon General warned that about half of U.S. adults are experiencing considerable levels of loneliness, which can affect physical, mental, and societal health. He said loneliness is like hunger or thirst. It's a feeling that we experience when something we're lacking for survival is missing from our life. And if we respond to it relatively quickly, it may go away, but just like hunger or thirst, it's when it persists for a long period of time, when we're not able to figure out how to address it, that's when we start to worry. So just that quote, yeah, we're not meant to be alone. That's why history, it's, you know, I'm not trying to get, everything's in at least pairs, Adam and Eve, (laughs) Cain and Abel. You know, the, you think of all these times where even when you learn in history, it's groups of people, how people migrated together. You weren't going to go on the Oregon Trail and say, you know what? (laughs) You didn't see a bunch of Conestoga wagons that were like, this is a car of one, a wagon of one. No, you know, absolutely. And the other thing that I was thinking is what's so interesting with the loneliness piece is 
COVID, during COVID, there was, everyone was screaming from the rooftops how, you know, they were so lonely and the mental health epidemics and all the suicides and these horrible things coming out of COVID. But yet this is the moment post COVID. It's like how quickly we forget. Right? How quickly do we forget how that's what I think. Do you remember when we couldn't hang out? And it's that's where and and because the loneliness obviously, like we had said already, overlaps with the the parent stress. And so and that research is overlapping. So the mention of loneliness though in the actual study in the article was also connected to social media and and Mm. kids and parents stress over social media Mm. and so it's also that it's like how interesting you know even it's like even though during covid we knew that what was happening was so unnatural that we didn't want it that it was terrible that our kids were like we hate this we want to get back to school but then yet we thrust the phones we into their hands phone, man we thrust the phone into their hands because they're like okay that's the only way to that's the only way to connect right now we let the kids have those and then you know it's like our social media episode that we talked about so then though now we're in this you know post covid you know lockdown moment where now the kids, we're, we've still let them keep the phones, right? Oh. Like we've still, we haven't taken the phones back. We haven't said, okay, you only get the phone, you know, during these t- chunks of time where you're not allowed to have a phone until, you know, you're 16, 17, 18. And so, and that's where I'm just like, again, it goes back yeah, to the parenting piece. Yeah, we're already starting it. It's, yeah. Well, and it goes back to the parenting piece because again, this is the, this is literally what also is in the list of things that are stressing parents out is social media, but because of the bullying and just the fact that it's there and we know that it's draining the kids, but yet we're not taking it away Yeah, because they want to be bad because they don't want to be the bad guy. And, and I need to, I need to remember her name. It's terrible, but um, I feel like any parent, you see her face all the time. Now this top um, parent, psych child, psych parent and child psychologist has said exactly that. Your job is not to be your parent, your child's friend. friend yeah. It's not to make sure that your child is always, um, you know, happy with you. It's to protect your child. Your responsibility is to protect your child, is right. to make sure your child is healthy and that they survive and they, they you know, right. so that's where it's like, well, you can't complain about social media and then not take it right. away. And it's like, and this, you can't complain about loneliness and then not take away the social media. Exactly. And it's interesting, two pieces to that. I love what you're saying about, you know, the you're raising your kids not to be your friend, to keep them safe. I remember the actress, June Diane, who was in, um, she's been in a ton of things, but Grace and Frankie and whatever. Mm -hmm. She was in an um, interview, I think it may have been on a podcast or in an article years ago. And I remember it really stuck with me. And she said, you know, you, she was talking about how, of course, I don't want my kids. They're not at college age yet, but she's like, of course, I don't, you can't even think about them being gone. But she's like, however, you raise your kids to leave you. Yes. And so easy for me to think of that as someone who doesn't have kids. But it's a reminder of like, well, this isn't going to sustain. Mm-hmm. And your point about the social media, I mean, that was in the Surgeon General's warning about the loneliness epidemic, right? That is not unique to if you have children. This is everybody. This is everybody. Yeah. 50% of U.S. adults are considering, can consider themselves to be lonely, right? And so of course I can we can theorize and I was wondering, well, what did they what were the causes that they found in the study? And they were saying that some of the reasons were because it is the lack of social interaction was a big one, decline in social connections. Um, and then they said that is attributed to various factors, including changes in social networks, reduced community involvement, and the impact of technology. And you know, so like you're saying, it's not like people are making it up, but the this, this stopping it piece. I think we may have talked about this before, whether it was on the pod. I know you and I have talked about it. But just in that last part of the impact of technology and then changing changes in social networks. Clearly, we all like I'm not perfect. Use my phone too much. All the things. But 
I do try to be present. I do go on walks. Sometimes, yes, I got my headphones in. I'm listening to music or I want to listen to podcasts. But sometimes I intentionally don't have my headphones in because I want to give an opportunity for if I am on a walk and I run into someone, for them not to be like, oh, you have headphones in, whether that be somebody I know or just a high on the street, which has happened which always happens pretty much if I choose, okay, no headphones in. And looking up, it's like they say when you, how would you know if you're in a new area, if you, or not even a new area, you, like me moving, when I moved to Annapolis, if I didn't know anybody here and every day I decided when it came time to make decisions, like what I wanted for lunch or where I was going to go on a walk, if every day I said, I'm gonna go out of my house and turn right, I'm only going to go the path of what's on the right. But if I go left, if I look up from my phone, if I take my headphones out sometimes, you have to also give opportunity for connections. Because just like back when, remember the thing of um, literally on Craigslist, misconnections? Yeah, of course. Which was like the first form of internet dating. Yeah. And it was literally Craigslist. There was misconnections where you would, people who... Let's say I'm on, you know, the Metro and I made eye contact with a guy and we vibed for a second and then, okay, here, I'm at my stop. It's time for me to get off and go to work. There's no way for me like, damn, I literally missed that connection. People would then go on. They would write like to the guy in the gray jacket that, you know, helped me with my bags when I was on the Metro today. I'm single and interested, Call you know, reply to this message, just like you would on any Craigslist listed if you're selling something. You know, you're not putting your email out there so you can start to make those connections on Craigslist. But if everybody's now sitting on the Metro, reading their phone on the way to work, you oh know, my God, headphones such a good point. in, there's no misconnections. No. And you, as the person, even if it was like a little, you were hot, I'm just trying to make a move here, like... We made eye contact. But you made eye contact. If your headphones are in and you're not getting it, you're like, oh, I don't know if that misconnection was me. They and, just... and let's be real. The headphones in is the latest version. We're right. talking about most people have their head down. I mean, that's why I can't remember when it was, but I remember um, this was a couple, this was years back, just talking about how, you know, people were getting hit by cars and all this stuff because oh they're God. literally looking yeah. at their phones and walking. Yeah. Yeah. They're not, you know, they're not seeing each other. Right. I, you know, I just, all these things, the other thing that, you know, immediately comes up is, well, actually, because in the Surgeon General's, the, the parental stress, you know, uh, review and article mentions, you know, everybody, you know, needs to be interested in this and talks about, you know, of course, government and all these things, but also, you know, employers saying, mm. you know, employers need to, um, you know, talk about, you know, they, they, they we, it literally even listed like having trainings, you know, it's for the managers. And I'm like, okay, like, like that's actually going to happen. But it's literally, I'm also thinking though, an easier step would just be employers being aware of don't make this person work this excessive amount of time and go. get all this done. Because here's the piece too. Think about if you are stuck at your desk and you are now, because you, whether you're remote or not, but remote employee or the non-remote mm. employee, and you got to drive in and you're still expected to have grind and get so much done. We all know because of technology, we're all right. supposed to get more and more and more and more and more done. So what does that do? Not only are you sitting at your desk and you're alone, you're not making real human interaction connection. Totally. These are all virtual connections. And you're also holding them back from being able to literally get up from their desk. I'm thinking of the basics of like, now we have to use Instacart. Now yes. we have to use, you know, Amazon delivery because nobody has time. Right. You, you're you not even, I mean, think about literally right. social Safeway. We've talked about before on this pod where it was yep. the whole thing. Again, that's you're, not, where you you're, meet you're eliminating connections. Yes. And that's such a good one. And I remember reading, this was something, I wish I remember where I read it or heard it years ago. I'm talking, I was still working in person, living in DC, and I was a single person. And I remember, um, again, struggling with that too, where working in the office, there's also that part where, sure, on one regard, when I'm in my 20s, it was nice that I did have people I work with that I enjoyed and became friends. 
but there was also this social aspect of work where it was like expected of you man, be at the happy hour. I literally got feedback <laughs> one of my first jobs of like, you need to go to more happy hours. Mm. And I'm like, oh my God, like company, oh God. like, you know, yeah. mixer things. And I'm like, I don't have time to go to happy hour with just my friends. Right. You know, like outside of work. Right. You know, orchestrated happy hours. And I remember at the time reading in, I think it was a magazine or something. And they talked about how single people or people without kids, especially that are younger, can get taken advantage of in work scenarios because it's like you don't have the kids. You're not going to drop off. You don't have a partner that you're worried about, like, oh, we're going home for dinner. And so but they said, but by you having that employee, it would the article was saying, like, you as the single person should feel empowered to say I can't do that or put on the calendar, like, not like you have a PTA meeting tonight, but I have a dinner with friends because it's holding me back from potentially having the family that I want. Whether that family means me finding a husband ding, and having ding, ding. kids or that is my friend family, that's my time. That's my personal time. Yep. So, yeah, there's that. And as think well. of that too. It's also because it's like that vicious cycle, right? When you're lonely. And especially when it's like work and you're drained and you don't have energy, it's like chicken or the egg. Is it that you're so drained from your ridiculous 10 hours that you spend at your desk in front of your computer and then all you want to do is like find time to maybe, maybe go to the gym. If you can even find time to do that, you're trying to just figure out how to, how to make dinner. And, it, and it's, then it's the cycle of, well, now I barely have energy to get up. Then I live in a city that if I do go outside, it's energy draining because mm. think about it, the honking, the, you know, and I'm not knocking on a city again, love no. it. But I'm saying like, you could see how if in a, in a city and I'm thinking it now to back to my time in DC, you know, when I would work those insane hours mm -hmm. and then I step outside and it, it's everything from the jackhammer in your ear to the busy traffic and if you have no time to collect yourself and breathe, I, I you know what I'm saying? I or, feel like that yes. vicious cycle so is that, just there. And, and again, that can be because some people just, they do thrive off of it, right? And they love it. And I think, so that maybe is more, that can be unique to you, right? Your personality. Yeah. But in, I will say on the connection side, because like you said, you're not knocking on a city and we mentioned it before, like when you mentioned your Hawaii example, right? Yeah. Obviously no city, you weren't yeah. living at a city yeah. and not having those connections. You can get that in the city. You can even like number one fan, our brother-in-law. That's so true. And Kiki, like they live in a city. They have community. They have invested in the community. Sure. They have children now too, but they also in COVID met a lot of people that were like them. They were young families that were also investing, investing by like, we are staying. I always we say staying. DC we want to be here three, five forever. Yeah. Like you're either there for three years after school and you're like, okay, on to the next city or you're there five years and it's a different job takes you there or whatever reason, or you're like, okay, I'm, I'm committed. I'm in DC forever. Right. When you, I think also psychologically, when you make that commitment, even mm, if you didn't have yes. kids, you're like, okay, I got to get involved now. You know, this is where I live. This matters. Yes. So they do have this really beautiful community that they are helping each other. But also with that, because they do have kids that are the same age. And now, you know, we're four years post 2020. They met a lot of those families around the same time, moving into the neighborhood, having kids the same age. Then they're all home at the same time in COVID they made community. They got to this level of trust pretty quickly, I would say, because their children were not in school together yet when they met. Now they are because they go to the neighborhood school and they are always looking out for each other. And, you know, Kiki's always got a, oh, I'm dropping this person off. Yes. Or, oh, no big deal. Like she was here recently and Oh, well, little diva, actually, I need to get back because, you know, school's going to be over soon. It was like, well, let me just call. It wasn't like the one friend. They're like, it was a plethora of like, let's go to the group chat of people that they are, they have trust with because that's the other part. You can go to a neighborhood that's like, oh, look, I can tell this is suburb. There's kids everywhere. You know, this is cute. But you still have to build up. You're brand new moving into a neighborhood. 
if everybody's not opening their doors and saying, welcome, Morgan, you know, welcome in. I have a kid too. And saying we should hang out. And it's up to, you know, somebody has to make the move. Right. Yes. And in some neighborhoods, it doesn't happen. And even when you are the person that's like, I'm going to go knock on these doors and say, hi, I'm Stacy. I just moved in. Some people are like, okay, why are you telling me this? You know, like you mentioned before, D.C. We lived in, I probably lived in four different apartment buildings in D.C. I never, my first apartment, I knew my neighbor, thank God. But we also bonded over the sketchy stuff that was going on in the building. Mm. Second apartment, I knew you know, two of our sisters literally lived there, Lindsay and Kiki, and then my friend Mandy. We already knew each other and lived there. But then the third apartment, I know no one in the building. Actually, that's not, I met one person. She was very outgoing. We met, we became friends. We still, you know, chat to this day. But the way I met other people in that DC building was because one morning there's a fire alarm going off and it's early and I'm thinking it's just a drill or whatever. There was a homicide mm. in the building and that's how I started to meet neighbors because we're all standing outside when there was also a bomb threat. When the bomb squad shows up and we're like, oh my God, we're sharing that we now have a connection beyond we just live here. One, you don't see people unless you're happy to go in and out of the building at the same time or I used to also go, I wasn't an owner of the building, but it was a condo building. I would still show up at the condo meetings as Mm -hmm. a renter simply to meet people. Yeah. And there was a large uh, amount, I would say like it was also, there was a lot of older people in the building, like senior citizens who had lived there. They were owners. They were Mm -hmm. invested. And I remember saying at the time to people like, no, I am going to go to the meeting. I'm not just doing what you would see a lot of the young people. They'd walk through the lobby the day of the condo meeting. And they'd have it like a mixer, right? There'd be wine and snacks, whatever, yeah. pizza. They would see the meeting going on. There'd been notice in the elevators for, you know, a couple of weeks leading up to it. And they'd walk right by and go upstairs. I'm like, I wasn't an active voter on the board because I wasn't paying condo fees. My landlord was, right? right? I went to meet the people. I went to do it also strategically because I was younger having parties. And I wanted, you know, Sally and Don to know... Stacy's okay. Yeah. Yeah. You know, uh, 405, she's sweet. She helped us take down tables at the condo meeting. You know, we sent her home with boxes of wine and pizza. <laughs> like, yeah. You know, there's that too. Yeah. No, I mean, it exactly. And it's, it can be volunteering. It can be, I mean, there's so many different ways that you can end up connecting with folks and go outside of your it you don't know, wait norm. Till don't wait bad until happens something bad happens to make the connection. Right? I mean, that literally moving to Annapolis, knowing again, I'm invested. We're here. We are owning. We're never, you know, this is our forever home. I was laughing with Joe saying like, you know, every day I'd be like, oh, I met so-and-so. I met so-and-so. And I was like, well, it's my goal to introduce myself to the neighbors oh, and not absolutely. be like, you know, this welcome wagon, like, hey, I brought muffins, but just organically if I'm outside in my yard or on my front porch and someone's on their porch or they're walking by I say hi hello good morning I make eye contact I introduce myself to those on my street and I do that partially because I have learned my lesson I don't want to meet the people when something bad goes goes you know goes down I've been in situations when I was in Baltimore you know, I mentioned it in another podcast, the house I was living in, you know, my friend Adamone, it burnt down. We were living in it. We were all okay, thank God. But one of the biggest lessons for me was the amount of community that came out of left field because I literally was meeting people for the first time that lived two doors down who were offering me everything from literally cash out of their pockets to bottled water to a place to stay. And then those connections, you know, that was how then Adam, some of those neighbors still, you know, he's close with and whatnot. But you shouldn't have to bond over tragedy. No, I know. And to make a connection. You shouldn't. You shouldn't. And that's where, you know, I guess just moral of the story. It's 
Exactly that. You know, know your neighbors before something bad happens, right? Like the, all those people that did offer help, that's amazing. Offer help. And then at the same time, the other lesson is accept it. Don't, mm. you know, we feel like, especially, you know, we hear so much right now. I feel about high functioning and I got it. And, um, you know, codependent, which is, you know, I got it, I got it, I got it. Accept help when it's yes. offered, you yes. know, that's also, it's not just for you to be able to say, yes, I accept it. But for that person that's offering it, that is for them to also connect with you. Yeah. It's, it's, it feels good for them. But it's also, yeah, for them too, because it, it's no different than if you say to me, like, if you're offering me help to, I don't know, it's just like when you call me, like, hey, I'm going to the grocery store. Do you need anything? And I'm like, oh, that's sweet. She's not do that. But I'm like, you know what? I really do actually need some eggs. Yeah, can yeah. you have me eggs? Yeah. And then it's also like it opened up that thing. And this is even us as sisters, but still learning, you know, what it's like to live close to each other as adults with husbands and, you know, with families, not just us living in the same apartment building. It then makes me be like, oh, yeah. And then I'm like, hey, I'm going to the grocery store because we're just helping each other. Right. Right. And and that that in that same vein, it just reminds me of if you do. It's it literally is just it, it, when you have when you're in a fan in your sorry, I can't get my words out. It's like that moment when you're at whether it's in-laws or a new friend or, you know, boyfriend, new boyfriend's family. And they say, Hey, Stace, can you actually, can you go cut those cucumbers up over there? And, or can you, when you are invited also to help, it's another level of inviting someone in. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, you're when inviting, you say, mm-hmm. I got it, I got it, I got it. When the new person is like, can I help you? Or, or they haven't totally. even offered. There's a, you are taking the relationship and I'm sure some therapists could explain why, but you're taking that relationship to the next level when you are able to say, Hey, you, I'm tapping you. We're close enough or we're not even close enough. This is just a chill enough vibe yeah. that like, I need an extra set of hands. It, it, right. and it brings, you know what I mean? It brings you, it brings together, you together because you are, again, you're helping each other and not that everyone likes to feel needed. It's not that, but it is, there is this like connection over, over, it is over that, that you are feeling needed or you are like, okay, cool. You know, she was trusting me enough. And I'm only saying was like using an example of when you get invited to the, you know, the parent's house of the guy that you're dating or the woman for the first time. It's like, yeah, the first time they're probably like, no, just sit, relax, relax, relax. But then you're a couple visits in when they're like, yeah, would you actually help me with this? Yes. You're like, okay, cool. Yeah. I'm in. Now. I'm in. Also, why would you want me to be with you in the kitchen chit-chatting if you didn't <laughs> like me enough, right, to totally. be around? Totally, totally. But, but yeah, I don't know. I think that's a good place to wrap it up, you know? And, I do too. And <laughs> it's funny too, because our shout out for this week, I feel like, Eden, um, Eden's DC oh salon. God. What um, would we do without you, Eden? Which is another community. Let's let's be real. Yep. That's another place to find community. Your local salon. Yeah, your salon, and, your barber shop. You know, you walk into that salon and man, you can't be in there for two seconds without she's talking to everybody. Yep. Everybody knows each other. Eden DC work DC salon. Been doing our hair for <sighs> too long. Since I don't even know. Fourteen 15? years for me, so more for you. Yeah, I, I don't know. Over 15 years. It's just crazy. Um, and, but yeah, it's like, we've talked, I've talked with her about, I mean, has helped me through. Mm. I had, I mean, my fresh new cut. She's my shout out because I went and got my hair cut. But I'll be damned if that woman wasn't hugging me and holding me when I was crying. Mm. After I lost all my hair, you know? Right. And to go back. Um... A couple years later, and she hadn't seen me in a year because I was, in, I'm still in the phase. I was, this is my first haircut where I've been able to like style, really style my hair the way I want it to be because it had grown in enough. Mm. And um, to go back and have her then put the stickers for our podcast like all over the salon. Yeah. 
I know. We love you, Eden. And like you're saying, <laughs> that Eden could be a whole god. If, if but I think I say that though because it's like you can you can find community anywhere. You can. You know, you can. You have to. It's like we said. You have to be willing to be present. You have to be willing to look for the opportunities and make the opportunity. You know, it takes action. And we say that all the time. You know, someone, just like if you were going to date someone, it takes someone saying hello, eye contact. Yeah. You know, oh, where do you, it, it's still, there takes some effort. It t- takes effort. It's a two-way street. And and it's also like we talked about before, you know, with um, even, it's funny, we've talked about this before with me saying, um, you know, that moment where I was at EYC and said to one of my now mom friends um, who I had never really hung out with before, like, I think I recognize you from that group, group chat that I'm in that I've never been able to show up. And then since then I've shown up and I've, you know, I've developed, you know, more friendships Mm. and, you know, that's where, I don't know. It's just prioritizing, prioritizing people over what we feel like society and marketing tries to tell us that success is like prioritize connection prioritize connection because the whole you know instagram influencer of prioritizing the fact that you've got the perfect um you know contour not only the (laughs) contour but i'm thinking also from the parent side of like because they've talked about this in the Mm. article uh the surgeon general's article of like the pressure of these are all the perfect things you have to do to be a parent. Sometimes it's just not that. It, it, literally, he said, he's, the Surgeon General says, it's also sharing and speaking mm. about the stress of being a parent. And, you know, I could yeah, get it. Because you can relate. Or you can relate. And it's like we talked about, you know, with honestly, even with the, how it's a funny, a funny to go in on the, you know, the interior, <laughs> unsolicited interior design, you know, we're connecting, it's that saying, over, we're connecting. Right, when right. you relate to someone, you have that deeper level of connection. And, you know, those it just immediately I could get emotional again over, you know, thinking about those moments when I've had a long day and I step outside and whether, you know, it's Warren or Ayesha, that moment of community yeah. when I get up from my like desk. I said, just having, especially when we are remote and we're just, we're talking through a screen all day, being able to walk into, that's why I like to start my yes. day with humans, going to the gym, saying hello, the person at the death front desk saying hello. That's the other side of it too. Even if you're the most, I have so many friends, I work in person, I know everybody on the block. You don't know your hello, your eye contact to someone else who does feel lonely, what it might mean for them. You know, I could go on, but that's also where it's like, do check out on the scene, the older people in your neighborhood, say hello, check in, do something for them, you know, and it also, it means so much for them, but it also means so much for maybe the family members that they have that don't live around the corner. You know, we've experienced that. It's like, let's just take care of each other. Look out for each other. Yeah. Let's connect, look out, and literally <laughs> look each other in the eye and say, hi, good morning. Hi, good morning. And How are you? Was just, good morning. Good morning. Yeah. It so can, with that, good night. That, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> but thanks for coming back. Yeah. And Eden, shout out to you. Love you. Yeah. Thanks for all the support. Um, and yeah, divas, diffs, diffs. Talk to y'all next week. Bye, y'all.